Welcome back to Cars and Guitars. Here we are again with another guitar episode. So this guitar I've had since 2017. Uh, it wasn't a new guitar at the time and it came out of a studio in Sydney. So the guy I got it off sold it as a 2000 model. Now I didn't think it was, but the price was good, so I jumped on it. It needs a new set of strings, so what I'm gonna do today is pull it apart and go through the steps of dating this. What I believe to be a 1990 Fender Stratocaster in Aquafire Mist. Welcome to Cars and Guitars, because if you're going to have an expensive hobby, you may as well have two. So when I first seen this pop up for sale, I had an inkling that it was a bit older than the seller thought. Uh, he had never pulled it apart and USA made strats weren't his thing. The way to date it is to punch the serial number into something like the Guitar Data Project, which is exactly what the seller done. Uh, it's a really good resource and luckily Fender has been putting serial numbers on their guitars from the beginning. But they also aren't super accurate and sometimes they can use the number sequences again decades later and there is some overlap too. So what you really want to do is, if you're comfortable, pull the guitar apart and in doing so you can use other markings on components such as the neck heel, pots, pickups, uh, and things like that, which can all be put together to accurately date a guitar. The first thing you'll notice is the serial number on the front of the headstock under this CBS style Fender logo. Uh, it starts with N for 90s. But if we punch this into the guitar data project, we get something a little bit odd. It says your guitar was made in 1990 or 1999 to 2000. Remember this serial number on the front of the headstock because at the end of this, something will be really obvious. Let's get this pick guard off. We can have a look at the pot dates, which will be helpful in dating it. We can also pull the neck and have a look at the date there. The first thing you'll notice is this giant swimming pool shaped route. Uh, it's called that because of the way that it is. It was a bit of a cost saving thing in the 90s. They'd route all the bodies like this, so you can put in humbuckers, single coils, any combination, uh, and they could just have one body for all the configurations. Looking at the pots here, uh, unfortunately the last three digits on the pot code are soldered over, uh, but we can see a 137, which is the manufacturer code for a CTS pot, and then a 9 for 90s. So nothing definitive yet. Uh, something else you might notice is this giant stack pot. This is what's called a TBX tone control. It's a treble bass expander. It expands the treble and bass. Uh, how it works is 5 is what would normally be 10, and 10 is 5 more. It's a common mod, but looking at the solder joints, it's come this way from factory, uh, and this was a standard feature at the time. Let's pop the neck off this thing, and hopefully there's a date written under here. Fender wasn't ink stamping dates in this era, so we should see a handwritten one on a little bit of paper. And we do, but we don't. So, so we've got a nine, but the bit that says the year is missing. Uh, it doesn't look like it's in the neck pocket either, so that's lost the time. Pretty cool though. It's got some, some names on it, uh, and a picture of Spongebob's mate. Not really sure what that's about, but if you do, let me know. It's definitely got some age though. You can see how much the, the lacquer is ambered over. Now we've got a lot of different parts of the puzzle here, and they're all adding up to it being a 90 strat. A few extras, uh, double string trees, and the wire color, and style of the pickups. But earlier in this video, I mentioned the serial number on the front of the headstock. Well, Fender only did this from 1976 up until around 1996 when they moved the serial numbers to the back of the headstock. So there's no way this could be from 1999. Also, by 99, they stopped using this style Fender logo as well. This next part might get a little nerdy, but, but bear with me. So the early 90s N9 serial numbers can be found on strats from 1990 and even into about 1992. So how do I know this is a 1990? The serial number decal is always in two parts in that era. The two parts were the serial number and a letter, in this case N for 90s, and the six digit number for the year and production number. When Fender ran out of the half that said serial number E for 80s, 
They still kept using the six digit number decals that at that point started with a nine when they should have switched to a six digit number decal that started with a zero for 1990. Later on in 92, they got revised versions of the first part of the decal that said serial number N2 for 92, and they still use the six digit individual numbers. So this thing has definitely been through some hands in the studio, as you can see from the frets. It's had strap locks fitted at some stage. It's got a few chips and dings, but it is a really great sounding strap. Stays in tune and does all the strap things. So all that's left to do now is throw a fresh set of strings on it and play a little 90s tune. Kidding. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for plenty more.